Welcome to the September 2017 Star Wars News Roundup, where we gather all the major movie, canon, and gaming news of the month in one place. Let's kick things off with the news surrounding Episode 9. Colin Trevorrow is no longer directing the third film of the sequel trilogy. After rumors of difficulties behind the scenes, Trevorrow and Lucasfilm parted ways, and J.J. Abrams was brought back to finish what he started. I'm personally very happy with this news. I had nothing against Trevorrow, but if they're gonna shake up the directors again, I'd rather it happen now than in the middle of production. I loved The Force Awakens despite its flaws, and I don't think those mistakes will be repeated. So I welcome JJ back. But I've talked about that enough before, so I won't get on my soapbox again. Star Wars Rebels Season 4 released another trailer along with the premiere date. October 16th will see the return of the series with two episodes called Heroes of Mandalore Parts 1 and 2. We'll get two episodes per week through November 6th, and then one more episode November 13th. There will be a break and a return in early 2018 leading up to the series finale. Moving on to the Han Solo film, Ron Howard has continued to tease us via Twitter. Paul Bettany joined the cast, and I heard he'll be playing the character originally held by Michael K. Williams, and I'm still a little bummed by his departure. It was announced that Amelia Clark wrapped her time on the film, but the most tantalizing images tease a visit to the Spice Mines of Kessel, which I, for one, am excited to see. There are also rumors of Darth Vader appearing in the movie, but as always, take that stuff with a grain of salt. A one-off comic called Storms of Crate will be coming this December after the release of The Last Jedi. It'll tie the events of the new film into the time of the original trilogy, which makes sense considering the planet is already known to have an old rebel base on it. And by the way, if you want a little more information about Crate, you should check out the book Leia, Princess of Alderaan. Speaking of The Last Jedi, a few new ships were revealed this month, including Snoke's flagship, the Mega-Class Star Destroyer Supremacy, and a Resistance capital ship called the Rattus. I love the name Rattus, I like the name Supremacy, I don't like the name Mega-Class Star Destroyer. Something about Mega just rubs me the wrong way. Also, Poe is getting an X-Wing with some sort of booster that'll make him even faster. But the biggest news about The Last Jedi is that the film is done. Ryan Johnson has confirmed the final edit is finished. That's great, but if I were him, I don't think I could handle that. It'll just be sitting there for almost three months. I would be constantly thinking of things to add or improve. It would drive me nuts. Last month, Disney announced that they would be creating their own streaming service, and we all began wondering what that meant for Star Wars and Marvel titles on Netflix. Disney answered and revealed that those properties would remain completely on their own service. So that's a bummer. But that's it for me, so I'm going to pass things off to Elliot from Battlefront Updates to fill us in on everything that happened in Star Wars gaming this month. Thank you, Alex. The main news this month, of course, comes from the new Battlefront 2 trailer. But before I get into that, I just wanted to mention that earlier this month, EA released the season pass for the first Star Wars Battlefront for free on all platforms. So if any of you guys don't have the season pass, I would highly recommend you to pick it up because it's free. Why not? And it makes the base game a lot more fun. So now over to the trailer. A few days ago, EA released a trailer called This is Battlefront 2, voiced by John Boyega himself. And this wasn't the standard trailer that we see, because this one contained a lot of information, charts and comparisons to the previous game, because the thing people have asked for regarding the new game is information, and that's exactly what this trailer provided. Throughout the trailer they have a bunch of new gameplay from Takodana, with Kylo Ren, Kamino and so on, but then they show this chart that shows a comparison to the previous game in terms of content. So you can see that there's 18 locations compared to the last game's 4 locations. 14 of these are for the multiplayer and 4 of these are exclusively for the single player. And then we have 14 versus 6 heroes and a whopping 39 versus 11 vehicles. So they have pretty much tripled all the content here and on top of that we have the single player campaign. Two new heroes were also revealed in this trailer. First of all we have Leia with her comic skin which is pretty cool and also Palpatine who might accidentally have been showed because you need to slow down the Twitter version of the clip and snap a screenshot here and then you can see that it's Palpatine with his robes. They also revealed all the game modes that will be in the multiplayer which is Starfighter Assault, Galactic Assault, Blast, Strike 
like in Heroes vs. Villains. Most of these we knew about before, but Strike is the new one that is going to be a smaller game mode with only 8 vs. 8 instead of the 20 vs. 20 of the Galactic Assault. And lastly, they also revealed the Arcade mode, which is the new offline mode if you don't want to play against real players. In this mode, you can play single player against bots, either as a hero or as normal infantry, and try out the different loadouts before you head into the multiplayer. And if you play on consoles, you can also do it with or against a friend with split screen. Unfortunately, that is not available on PC, which is a shame. And lastly, the big news is of course the beta that launches next week on October 4th if you pre-ordered or October 6th for everyone and runs all the way to October 9th. It will be launching at 8 a.m. UTC, so simply google that if you want your local time. And I would highly suggest anyone who's interested in the game to try it out because it's completely free. But that's all for this month's gaming, now back to Alex. Thanks Elliot! If you want to keep more up to date with Star Wars gaming news every day, subscribe to Battlefront Updates who provides daily videos about all Star Wars games, not just Battlefront. But that's it for September. The Star Wars News Roundup will return on November 1st to cover everything that goes on in the month of October. Until then, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and consider checking out my Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.